RIP did okay by us in that previous lab, but one thing we did was, or I did, I admit, is that I turned auto summarization off because I wanted us to concentrate on other things. And if we left auto summarization on, it was going to mess up our routes. And I want you to see exactly what auto summarization can do to the routing table that may look good, but as we're going to see with some connectivity tests, it's actually not all that good. And what I've done here is router one, we had to do a quick hardware swap. It's going to be serial zero instead of serial one zero, but everything else is the same, including the IP address. And routers two and three are our spokes just as before. Everything is as it was before on the 172.12.123 network. What I did though is take off the previous loop bags and I've taken two subnets of 20.0.0.0 slash eight and put them on router two. You can see what those are, 2111 and 2211 respectively. And then two more subnets of that major network number on 2311 slash 24. And the thing is this, this has an awful sounding term when you put subnets of one network number on one router and then you take subnets and put them of the same network number and you put them elsewhere in the network. These are called discontiguous networks and it sounds terrible, right? I mean, oh my gosh, my networks are discontiguous. I gotta fix that. Well, actually, you don't have to fix that. You don't want to fix that. This is much more real world. And the thing is, RIP has a little bit of a problem with this when we leave auto summarization at its default of on. And right now, I'm going to bring up router one's routing table. We're not going to do the config because I already did that. And again, the commands I used, same ones as in the previous video, version two, and then the network commands, and then that's it. So let's take a look at router one's routing table. And here it is with show IP route rip. And this might not be what you were expecting because we have the subnets out there, 2110, 2210, and so forth, but we don't see those. What we're seeing is the major network number, 2000 slash eight. And also notice we have two next hop IP addresses for this one route. What we're seeing here is a combination of two behaviors. And the first one is RIP's load balancing behavior, equal cost load balancing, I should say. When RIP sees multiple paths to one particular destination and the metric is exactly the same as it is here, one and one, RIP says, hey, we should load balance. We shouldn't just use one of those paths to get to destination A. We should use all of these paths and we'll split the load up kind of equally and go from there. And that sounds great, right? And in a lot of cases, it can be great. As a matter of fact, in the very next section, I'll show you how that can work in our favor. But the problem is right now with equal cost load balancing, the problem is we have these auto summarized routes. And I'll show you exactly why they're being auto summarized in a moment. But the problem is RIP is going to load balance anything we send to any of those four subnets, but we don't want that to happen. Let's go back to our diagram. We'll see exactly why. If we're sending packets over to 2311 over on router three, we don't want that to be load balanced. You know, it sounds like some of the packets would get through and then some of them would go over to router two. We don't want that. Uh, same goes for 2411. Same goes for all four of these subnets. And the reason the routes are being auto summarized is because we left auto summarization on and here's why it's working. And here, you know, router two is going to have two subnets that it's going to advertise via RIP. But the problem is they're being advertised across what we call a network boundary. The routes for 2110 are being advertised across or out the 17212 network. So that's a network boundary. And RIP's default behavior here is to summarize the routes that are being advertised. And that's why we're getting that funky result up on router one. Instead of seeing the subnets, we're seeing just the major network number. Same thing's happening over on router three. So that's why we have this load balancing going on right now, is router one is saying, hey, I'm getting an ad for 2000 slash eight from router two, and I'm getting it from router three. So when I send something to that network, I'll split the load up. And let me show you, we can actually see the summarized routes by debugging RIP. And I'm gonna run debug IP RIP. And then I'm gonna run our friend clear IP route asterisk to force an update. And I'll let one more go through. I think we've got everything we need there. 
that you all, of course, is the southern expression for undebug all. And you can put undebug all in there if you want to, but I usually just do you all. And it's also a good way to remember it first time you hear it. And you can see we've gotten some updates here. Here's received version 2 update, and this is the one that came from router 2. And you can see the route has been summarized. And we got received version 2 update from 123.2. Do we have one from 3? Here we go. Received from dot 3, 20.000 slash 8. So we can see that the routes are indeed being summarized. And I'm going to use the word funky again. I'm not, I'm not going to use it again for the rest of the course, I promise. But the real tip-off to spotting an auto-summarization problem is when you get a ping result that is just bizarre. And so far, I think we've seen five exclamation points. We've seen five periods. I think we saw a u.u.u, .u .u, but if not, we're going to see something here because I'm going to try to ping one of those subnets over on router 3. And you can see how odd looking this one is. And the thing is, it'll be a little different every time. Now we got one success and four timeouts. That's not good. Let's send it again now and see if we get the exact same thing. We got a timeout, then another timeout. Okay, so I'll go ahead and kill that one. And 2411. And you can see we're getting just timeouts here now. So let's try the others. Yeah, there we go. And it's really unpredictable. You never know how this is, <coughs> pardon me, how this is going to go. Because I've done this auto summarization lab for years and years. And when you send the pings, you know, some will go through, some will not. Sometimes you're going to have a U in there for, you know, an unreachable. But especially when you ping one of those and you're getting three success packets, three successes, one failure and one unreachable. That is a huge tip off when you're running RIP that you forgot to turn auto summarization off. So now that we've seen the debug, we've seen the summarized routes, we've seen what happens, let's go ahead and turn auto summarization off. We're going to do that on the next video because we also need to discuss where you turn auto summarization off and that is coming up next.